Imagine a painting so coveted, so sought after that it fetches a price of $450.3 million at auction. Yes, you heard that right. A staggering sum of money, enough to buy a small island or a fleet of luxury yachts, all spent on a single piece of art. What's up guys, it's Aaron Polo TV. But this is no ordinary artwork. This is Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi, the most expensive painting ever sold in the history of art. The story of this extraordinary piece of art is as fascinating as the painting itself. Thought to be lost to the sands of time, Salvatore Mundi, which translates to Savior of the World, was rediscovered in the early 21st century. It was found in a state of disrepair, hidden away in an American estate sale. The artwork was purchased for less than $2,000, a far cry from the astronomical figure it would later command. What followed was an intense process of authentication, a journey that took over six years. Leading Leonardo da Vinci scholars and art historians were involved in this painstaking process. They examined the painting under infrared and ultraviolet lights, studied its brush strokes, analyzed the pigments used, and compared it with other known works of the master. Finally, in 2011, it was authenticated as a genuine work of Leonardo da Vinci, one of fewer than 20 surviving paintings attributed to the Renaissance master. In November 2017, Salvatore Mundi was put up for auction at Christie's in New York. The art world watched with bated breath as the bidding war escalated, finally culminating in an anonymous bid of $450.3 million, a price that shattered all previous records. This staggering price paid for a single artwork begs the question why? What makes this painting worth such a fortune? Stay tuned as we delve into the artistic, historical and economic values of Salvatore Mundi, and explore why this painting is considered one of the most significant artworks of all time. To understand the value of Salvatore Mundi, one must delve into the artistic genius of Leonardo da Vinci. Now, let's take a moment to appreciate the techniques and style that make this painting a masterpiece. Da Vinci was a pioneer in the use of chiaroscuro, a technique that contrasts light and dark to give depth and volume to his subjects. In Salvatore Mundi, this technique is most evident in the draping of Christ's robes, where shadows and highlights define the folds and contours. The result is an almost three-dimensional effect making the figure seem lifelike and tangible. Equally significant is da Vinci's fumato technique where colors and tones are subtly blended to create soft edges and transitions. This technique is particularly noticeable in the face of Christ, lending it a delicate ethereal quality that captivates the viewer. The sfumato technique also contributes to the enigmatic smile on Christ's lips, an echo of the famed Mona Lisa smile, another of da Vinci's masterpieces. The symbolic elements in Salvatore Mundi further elevate its artistic value. Take for example the crystal orb in Christ's hand. This orb signifies the heavens, symbolizing Christ's dominion over the world. But it's not just a symbol. Da Vinci's meticulous representation of the orb's refractive properties showcases his understanding of optics, a testament to his scientific mind, and then there's that enigmatic smile. Just like the Mona Lisa, the ambiguity of Christ's expression has fueled countless debates and interpretations. Is it a smile of benevolence, wisdom, or perhaps a hint of divine irony? The allure of the unknown draws us in, inviting us to ponder and explore. The mastery of da Vinci is unquestionable, but it's the mystery surrounding this painting that truly intrigues. Salvatore Mundi, is not just a painting, it's a fusion of art and science, a testament to da Vinci's genius and a window into the mind of one of history's greatest thinkers. Every brushstroke of Salvatore Mundi whispers tales of its tumultuous past. This painting, whose name translates to Savior of the World, was created by the legendary artist Leonardo da Vinci in the early 16th century. It features a half-length figure of Christ, gesturing and blessing with his right hand while holding a crystal orb in his left. From the moment it was painted, Salvatore Mundi embarked on a journey that would take it through the hands of kings and across continents. Its first royal owner was likely King Louis XII of France, who was thought to have commissioned it as a gift for his consort, Anne of Brittany. After Louis's death, the painting disappeared, only to resurface in England in the 17th century. It was then in the collection of Queen Henrietta Maria, the wife of King Charles I. The painting, despite its royal pedigree, was sold off after Charles's execution during the English Civil War. For centuries, Salvatore Mundi was lost to the annals of history. It was only in the early 20th century that it reappeared, heavily overpainted and unrecognizable. It was sold for a meager sum, its true identity unknown. 
It was not until the year 2005 that a group of art dealers, recognizing its potential, purchased the painting. After years of restoration and research, it was finally revealed to be Leonardo's lost masterpiece, Salvatore Mundi. Since then, it has changed hands several times, each time breaking records for the highest price ever paid for a work of art. It was last sold in November of 2017 for an astonishing $450 million, making it the most expensive painting in the world. The painting's journey, shrouded in mystery and marked by royalty, further fuels its allure. Its historical significance is not just about who owned it, but also about its disappearance, rediscovery, and the journey it undertook to reclaim its rightful place as one of the world's greatest works of art. Art, like any commodity, has a price. But, how does one determine the price of a masterpiece? When we look at Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi, the world's most expensive painting sold for an eye-popping $450 million, we must wonder, what contributes to such an astronomical value? Firstly, we have to consider the sheer rarity of the piece. Da Vinci's works are few and far between, with less than 20 confirmed paintings in existence. The scarcity of his creations contributes significantly to their value, the Salvatore Mundi is no exception. It offers a rare glimpse into the genius of one of the greatest artists in history. Next, we have the undeniable connection to Leonardo da Vinci himself. As a polymath of the Renaissance era, da Vinci's reputation extends beyond the art world. His contributions to science, mathematics and engineering elevate his status, and by extension, the value of his works. Then, there's the prestige that comes with owning such a masterpiece. In the world of art collectors, possessing a da Vinci is akin to having a crown jewel. It's not just about the aesthetic appeal, but the bragging rights that come with owning a piece of history. But let's not forget the role of art as an investment. Yes, you heard it right. Art, especially works from renowned artists like da Vinci, often appreciate in value over time. It's not just a painting hanging on the wall, but a potential gold mine. It's a long-term investment that could yield significant returns in the future. Lastly, there's the element of speculation. The art market, like any other, is influenced by speculation. Buyers and sellers speculate on what they think others will pay for a work of art. In the case of Salvatore Mundi, the speculation paid off handsomely. The value of Salvatore Mundi then is not just in its artistic merit, but also its economic potential. The tale of Salvatore Mundi is as much a reflection on society as it is about the painting itself. When we gaze upon the vast canvas of human history, we notice that art is not merely a product of its time, but a powerful agent shaping our perception of reality. The fame and staggering price of Salvatore Mundi present a compelling narrative about the value society places on art. It's not just about the aesthetic appeal or the mastery of technique, it's about the story that the artwork carries, the emotions it evokes, and the conversations it ignites. The pursuit of prestige is a driving force in our society, and art has long been a symbol of status and power. The acquisition of Salvatore Mundi by a private collector for an astronomical sum is a testament to this. It's a display of wealth, yes, but it's also a bid for cultural capital. To own a masterpiece is to possess a piece of history, a conversation starter that transcends time and geography. Yet, the commodification of culture, as exemplified by the sale of Salvatore Mundi, raises profound questions. When art becomes a commodity, traded for its financial value rather than its intrinsic worth, we risk losing sight of its true purpose. Art is meant to inspire, to provoke thought, to challenge conventions, and to celebrate human creativity in all its complexity. The story of Salvatore Mundi also highlights the disparity between the haves and the have-nots. While a select few can afford to own such masterpieces, many artists struggle to make ends meet. As a society, we need to reevaluate our priorities and ensure that the value we place on art is not solely determined by its price tag, but by its ability to enrich our lives and broaden our horizons. As we marvel at the Salvatore Mundi, we are reminded that art, in its many forms, holds a mirror to the world we live in. It invites us to reflect on our values, our aspirations, and our shared humanity. It's not just about the painting, it's about what the painting says about us.